Before I get any further into this video, I just want to stress that I don't want this video to come across as me bragging or anything like that. In fact, I did hesitate a lot before actually deciding to create this video. However, I'm personally someone who would have really liked to have seen a video like this when I was younger, so I thought that now that I'm in a position to make a video myself, I would talk about my kind of lived experiences and give some advice based on that. And so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So I'm not going to beat around the bush with this one. I work in front office finance, which is quite well known for being a pretty high paying career path. I'm not going to go into my specific set of figures, but to give you a ballpark idea of the numbers we're talking about, I'm going to use an industry report again, as I have in previous videos. As a reminder, I have been an analyst too now for about six months. And before that, I was an analyst one. I did get a bonus over the year as well, which was pleasantly higher than what I was initially expecting. And finally, and most surprisingly of all, my Assure educational and career consulting business has picked up quite a bit over the past year. And so, to be honest, a good part of why I've been able to save more money than I thought I would is simply because I've also made more money as well. You've got to remember, it's all well and good having good saving and spending habits, but ultimately the amount that you can save is capped by how much money you're making. So just as an example, let's say you earn £20,000 after tax each year. Well, even if you somehow manage to save 100% of that, which we know isn't possible because you're going to have bills and expenses that you have to pay, at most you can save £20,000 a year. Now, let's imagine if you earn £50,000 after tax. Well, even if you now save only 50% of your post-tax income, you'll have saved £25,000, which is still more than the person who had saved up 100% of their £20,000 income. So I guess the short and sweet of it is, if you want to save more money, you have to get your money up somehow. In an economy that's as bad as the one we're in, that's obviously easier said than done. It's hard enough right now just keeping your job, yet alone pushing for higher paying ones. However, from my observations, there are a couple of principles or things that you might want to consider that might help you to boost your income in the long term. So the first thing I'd recommend is to learn new skills, get more knowledge and experiences, and this is applicable regardless of your age. So if you're a student, perhaps learn new technical skills. For example, if you're a finance bro, go and try and learn new accounting concepts or become more familiar with Excel and PowerPoint because it's more than likely that you'll need to get good at these skills to get a job in that industry in the future. By the way, I've made an entire video about where to start if you don't know anything about finance. So be sure to check out that video if you think it might help you. And if you're already in a job, don't stray away from the unfamiliar or the more challenging projects. It's those sorts of tasks that are really going to help develop you as an individual. It's effectively these skills and experiences that you'll be able to leverage going forward. You'll be able to use this new knowledge to make yourself more employable and also open yourself up to more better paying jobs in the future. My second bit of advice is to not chase short term money. And what I mean by this is don't chase short term money if it's going to hinder you or impact your ability to make more money in the long Run. So an example of this would be if you're a university student and if you can avoid it, don't spend that much time doing low skill uh, part time jobs that might impact your ability to do internship or graduate scheme applications that might make you a lot more money in just a few more years. Now, with that point I just mentioned, I obviously understand that it's very personal and depends on your specific financial circumstances. It's not possible for everyone to not work a part-time job. So I do completely get that. It is very much a privilege. So the third thing you want to think about are the long-term prospects of your job, both in terms of things like promotion, but also earnings potential. Now, to demonstrate this point, let's use an example or a scenario. Let's say you're about to graduate from university and you have the choice of two jobs to pick from. Now let's say that job one pays £40,000 straight out of university, but thereafter the earnings potential is pretty capped. Let's say that your salary only grows at 2 or 3% a year, which is roughly what inflation is in most years. Now then, for comparison, let's say that job two pays £30,000 a year. So that is obviously a £10,000 hit versus the first job that pays £40,000. But imagine that this job has much higher earnings potential, such that after two or three years you might be earning £50 or £60,000. Now obviously it depends on personal circumstances, but in most situations you're probably better off picking job two because it will pay you more in the long run, even though you're taking a slight hit to begin with. And then the fourth thing I'd say is to think about scalability. Now this point is more so for the aspiring entrepreneurs out there, and believe me, I've only just started my entrepreneurial journey, but one thing that I've really learned is that scale matters. So I started off my consulting business last year where I was taking each and every single one of the calls myself. Now that's fine to begin with, but it's not a scalable business. I'm limited by two things. Firstly, the number of hours I have available to take these consulting calls, but secondly, the amount I can actually charge per call. 
And because there's a limitation to both of these factors, I can only teach a certain number of hours at most 24 hours in a day. And there's obviously only a certain limit to how much I can really charge people for this service. I'm ultimately capped by how much this business can make. So what I've realized is, is when you're starting a business, you need to think about the steps that you can potentially take to scale that business. So for me, that's been things like hiring more consultants to take calls besides myself, and also outsourcing parts of the business, such as the marketing of it. Okay, so that's one side of the equation done and arguably the more important side. But that being said, it's no good making a bunch of money and then squandering it on really stupid, unnecessary purchases. So let me walk you through how I manage that side of things. Okay, so as soon as I get my paycheck, which comes in on the 25th of every month, I will automatically squirrel away at least 50% of it into my savings account. This concept of putting money into your savings account straight away is actually pretty popular. In a lot of finance circles, I've heard it being called pay yourself first. And what that basically means is even before you pay any of your bills or other expenses, you set aside money for your savings or investing plans before any of that. Now, just as a caveat, you do obviously need to pick an amount to save that will still enable you to cover your bills and things. So don't take it too literally, still obviously run calculations or figure out how much that you're able to put away before you start running into trouble with paying bills. Now, a month later, just before I'm about to get my next paycheck, any leftover money I have in my current account will tr get transferred over into my savings account. And then I will then use the next month's paycheck and repeat the process all over again. So to give a numerical example, let's say that on payday, I get £4,000 transferred into my bank account. Now then I would automatically transfer £2,000 into a savings account, which would leave £2,000 remaining in my current account. Then over the course of the month, let's say that I spent £1,600 in bills and other discretionary spending, which would leave me with £400 left. Now, just before I get my next £4,000 pay installment, I would transfer that £400 or most of that £400 into the savings account again, which means that overall for that month just gone, I've saved £2,400. Now, if you're wondering why I'm moving most of this money into my savings account and not investing into something like a stocks and shares ISA, it's because I want to help my parents pay down their mortgage before they have to refinance next year. So I'm doing it that way. Moving on to my actual spend, I won't go into the specifics of it that much simply because I've already covered it in my investment banking salary video. But the TLDR is that I really don't spend that much money on discretionary stuff at all. The things I do spend money on tend to have some sort of return on investment, whether that's from a time or productivity standpoint. For example, some of my more recent purchases have been an LED light bar for my monitor or an LED lamp that I plan on incorporating into these videos going forward. Overall, I guess my mantra would be to just think long and hard about discretionary spending and think about just how much use you'll really get out of that purchase. If you are going to spend money, I'd suggest to spend that money more on experiences because you'll probably get so much more satisfaction and happiness out of those rather than kind of a materialistic purchase, or at least that's what's been the case for me. What I'd say is that in a lot of cases, whatever you were thinking about buying isn't going to go anywhere and the price probably isn't going to materially change that much if you were to wait a couple of days. So just give it some real long thought and then if you are still convinced that you really want that thing, then bite the bullet by all means and go for it. Remember, there is more to life than just money. Um, and so, you know, don't, you know, have a really depressing, really boring life just to, you know, kind of penny pinch and save a couple more pounds. Just, you know, go out and enjoy yourself as well. Like there is clear, there is a clear balance uh, with everything. And finally, finally, because I've forgotten this point before, if you really are focused on saving more money or managing your spending more efficiently, create a budget and create a tracker to see just how much money you're actually spending a month. Now, a lot of these kind of newer kind of online banks uh, do tend to kind of have uh, existing kind of tracking of where your money is going, but you can also just do it the old, good old fashioned way using Excel, create yourself a budget, see how much money you think you should be saving at the end of each month, and then track that versus what you're actually saving and see which areas are you actually spending more or less money on. And that will really help you going forward to kind of know or identify where you can save more or less uh, in the future. Now, with that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you did find it useful and informative. If you did, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with your friends if you think they might also benefit from it. And with that, see you again, guys, and thank you so much for the support as always.